Welcome back everyone, I'm Nick930, and this is my final review for Capcom's recently released Resident Evil 3. Much like the Resident Evil 2 remake that released early last year, Resident Evil 3 is a complete reimagining of the original 1999 classic of the same name, with vastly improved graphics, completely redesigned level structures, and an entirely new control scheme. And while many of the elements of this remake feel reminiscent of the original, Resident Evil 3 Remake is a completely different experience, with some classic areas being removed entirely, while other areas have been expanded. There's a ton of changes that have been made, most of which have been covered already in my comparison videos. So for today's video, I'm going to try and treat this as its own standalone experience, and give you a good idea of what you can expect if you decide to pick this up. So to start off, let's talk about the narrative. Resident Evil 3 takes place in the fictional Raccoon City, prior to the events of last year's Resident Evil 2. Players assume the role of Resident Evil veteran Jill Valentine, who has just recently been suspended from her job at the RPD after pushing for a more in-depth investigation of Umbrella Corps' shady business dealings. The game starts off pretty quietly, with players able to explore Jill's studio apartment in first person. But this seemingly slow intro is turned on its head almost instantly, as a massive creature bashes through the wall and forces the player through some cinematic escape sequences, revealing soon after that the entire city has been overwhelmed by zombies. It's an unexpectedly fast reveal for the lead antagonist, though the game's sudden start does share a similar feel to the way the original game dropped players straight into the action. After about 10 or 15 minutes of scripted linear set pieces, the game does begin to open up a bit more, resembling your typical Resident Evil experience, with the story only being delivered through abandoned diaries and the occasional cinematic after completing objectives. But unlike with past games, RE3's pacing feels a bit too erratic. After a great first act, the game seems almost as if it skips a beat, with one intense encounter with the nemesis leading to another without a proper buildup. The game does swap over to Carlos, another playable character, allowing players to explore the inside of the police station again, but by doing this, the inventory is separated, and any gear uncovered is useless when the game inevitably switches back to Jill for an almost immediate follow-up boss fight with the nemesis. The game doesn't necessarily leave you unarmed, and provides you plenty of ammunition to prepare for this, but it feels a little bit unearned to go from such a climactic battle at the end of Act 1 into another battle almost right after. But with those pacing issues aside, I'm still pretty satisfied with the narrative. Jill Valentine is a solid lead protagonist. There's a few moments where it feels like they're trying a bit too hard to show how strong and independent she is. I'm fine. And it does feel like the game is constantly taking control away so that Jill can talk on a walkie-talkie, but as far as the story of an epic struggle against this ferocious monster goes, it's plenty interesting and has a nice payoff. Now of course, the original RE3 has a lot more depth and complexity to its story, with more environments to explore and build the atmosphere up, and more spaced out encounters with Nemesis to help him feel more special. But the added depth to each individual character thanks to their fantastic motion capture cinematics really helps to build on their personalities more, and the big easter eggs sprinkled throughout are definitely a nice touch. Next, let's talk about the design of the gameplay. Resident Evil 3 is at its core a third-person survival shooter game. Players will spend most of their time searching the environment for key items and supplies while also dealing with deadly enemies. The mechanics are built strongly around the design used in last year's game, with slow overall movement speed and limited ammunition that needs to be used on fairly resilient zombies. And just like the original RE3, this remake adds a few more gameplay mechanics that provide a much faster paced action oriented tone. The biggest addition of course is the Nemesis, who will appear at scripted events and pursue the player until they manage to reach a checkpoint. The Nemesis cannot be killed, though he can be easily stunned by shooting his weak spots on his chest. Additionally, a well-placed grenade can drop him instantly, even on the hardest difficulty, which is highly advised as he drops valuable loot at certain points throughout the first act. But this isn't always the easiest task, as Nemesis has quite a few powerful abilities, like a tentacle to grab and trip players, or a terrifying dash that almost always catches me off guard. What's disappointing about this enemy is that everything he does is predetermined. On repeat playthroughs, you'll find that he'll do the exact same thing every time, He'll always bash through a certain wall, or fly in from the sky at select points in the city, so there's no sneaking around him or avoiding the chases to begin with. Now, these scripted moments are fine, and often necessary for the sake of the game's narrative, but it would have also been nice to see Nemesis incorporated as a more dynamic enemy, adding a little bit more randomness to his appearances. But of course, Nemesis is only one part of the equation. RE3 is also populated with tons of zombies, that, while not flooding the screen like Dead Rising or other zombie games, are still far more threatening. 
A single zombie can drop a player's health down to almost nothing if they're not careful. And unlike Resident Evil 2 Remake, there's no way to counter a grapple using knives or grenades. So you're guaranteed to take damage each time they successfully grab you. To counter this, RE3 adds in a new dodge roll mechanic that can be easily initiated with a spacebar or right bumper depending on your input device. The dodge roll makes the game insanely easy and can be used for practically every enemy in the game. If timed properly, the player will avoid all incoming damage around them, even explosives, and can even initiate a slow motion auto aim to target the attacking enemy. This also works on Nemesis, with players capable of chaining multiple dodges together to avoid all of his incoming attacks. The move is based on a similar dodge mechanic added into the classic 99 game, but feels even easier to perform here, and makes scenarios that should be extremely challenging a breeze to pass through. RE3 also introduces new environmental traps to take advantage of, including electric generators that can stun large groups of enemies, or classic red barrels that can be used to blow up several zombies at once. Again, just like the dodge roll, these props make the game a little bit too easy. The barrels seem to be placed all over the place, and leading a group of zombies towards them helps to save a lot of ammunition. Considering both the Nightmare and Inferno difficulty modes relocate enemies and items in more challenging configurations, it would have been nice to see these environmental traps also relocated, or even removed entirely to add to that challenge. And then we have the design of the game's levels. RE3, despite taking place in a sprawling metropolis, feels strangely small and linear. The initial act has you exploring streets and alleys filled with storefronts and zombies, which at first glance look great, but after collecting a few key items, it becomes abundantly clear just how restricted the play zone really is. There's only two main streets accessible here, with stores that zombies can't even seem to chase you inside of. All the items and safe rooms are still placed in smart locations, and provide a nice flow to the gameplay as you weave back and forth and deal with increasingly more challenging configurations. But it feels like a missed opportunity to not make this area significantly larger, with more puzzles and enemy variety. RE3 Remake sees the return of almost every enemy from the original game. But outside of the zombies and the nemesis, many of the unique enemy types like dogs and these bugs are now limited to very specific areas. Again, having a larger area to explore would have allowed the developers to implement these enemies in more areas throughout the game, which would have greatly improved the pacing and replay value of the experience. Now, all these criticisms aside, RE3 is still a lot of fun to play. Searching around these beautifully detailed environments for supplies and carefully planning your next move at safe rooms as you manage a tiny inventory space is at the core of what the Resident Evil series is all about, and RE3 delivers what you'd expect in this regard. And because of its surprisingly short length, I found myself replaying this game more than any other entry in the series, thanks mostly in part to the new unlockable store options that become available after completing the story for the first time. There's a ton of gameplay buffs that could be applied here, all with XP earned throughout your playthroughs, including additional inventory space, early access to key items, and even damage buffs that can be stacked to nearly one-shot headshot every zombie. All of these buffs can be used together without penalties, allowing players to continue to achieve faster completion times and achievements. Trying to find the best combination of these buffs to handle crazy challenging difficulties like Inferno Mode makes the game even more enjoyable. So to summarize, RE3's core game is short, easy, and suffers from some major pacing issues. But it becomes more and more enjoyable with each repeat playthrough, as the many quirks and tricks you learn along the way make it more endearing. But of course, the Resident Evil 3 Remake isn't the only thing you're getting when you buy the game. To compensate for the short playtime, players are also given access to a new competitive multiplayer game called Resident Evil Resistance, an asymmetrical experience that has a group of four survivors trying to reach a goal while an opposing mastermind player spawns in traps and obstacles. Now, on paper, this mode sounds like it could be really interesting. The Mastermind is essentially given the role of a game designer, dropping in specific traps and enemies around corners to make it as challenging as possible for the players. The Mastermind has access to a handful of different classes, each with their own powerful abilities to become familiar with. The Mastermind can view the game environment through set camera networks, and can spawn in enemies using earned credits. Their goal is to either kill all four survivors, or prevent them from reaching the goal within the time limit. Meanwhile, the survivors also operate on a class-based system, with each character having their own special abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. Becca, for example, is proficient with firearms, and can activate a temporary infinite ammo ability to deal a lot of damage in a short amount of time. Other characters like Tyrone and Sam are more melee-centric, and can deal more damage using blunt weapons like baseball bats. 
The concept isn't necessarily unique, as many games like Evolve, Friday the 13th, and Dead by Daylight have previously attempted a similar style of gameplay. Though Resident Evil Resistance offers a much more claustrophobic feel, with lots of narrow environments and focused action. Sadly, it does feel like this game mode is already dead on arrival. I very rarely was able to find an active session online without having to wait upwards of 5 to 10 minutes. And when I eventually did find a session, I found that players that were losing would often rage quit halfway through and close the entire session down. On top of that, from the little I was able to play, it does feel as though there's some slight balancing issues here, along with a needlessly long grind to unlock upgrades for characters through continued play. Now, if you have a group of friends that are all big Resident Evil fans, then it's a mode that will undoubtedly be fun to play together now and again. But if you're looking to join in solo, especially on the PC platform, you'll probably leave disappointed. Finally, let's talk about the presentation. Just like Resident Evil 2 before it, Resident Evil 3 and its spin-off multiplayer modes look great. Character models are beautifully detailed and have great motion capture performances, and the game's environments look gorgeous. Issues I had with the previous game like the excessive bloom and really poor screen space reflections are technically still present here, but they're not quite as noticeable. However, RE3 does seem to be downgraded slightly from its predecessor, with much less impressive physics, especially concerning enemy ragdolls, and some major texture streaming issues in the multiplayer mode. In terms of performance and stability, Resident Evil 3 runs beautifully with little if any technical hiccups. I never once found myself getting stuck in the game world or witnessing any major bugs, outside of maybe a zombie body clipping through a door now and again. It feels like an extremely polished experience, and any deaths throughout could always be attributed to my own mistakes, rather than a fault of the game's design. Overall, Resident Evil 3 is a decent, but flawed experience. The game looks and plays beautifully, the story is interesting, and replaying the game has been a lot of fun. But it's hard to ignore all the missed potential with this new entry. It doesn't necessarily build off the 2019's Resident Evil 2, but rather seems to be taking advantage of its success. Nemesis is quite literally a reskinned Mr. X, with identical animations and core design elements, and giving him some scripted rocket launchers and flamethrowers really doesn't make him any more scary. But these negative points aside, Resident Evil 3 is still a lot of fun to play. I'm already on my fifth playthrough, once again experimenting with the bonus unlockable buffs and looking for more efficient ways to shave off time. But for players looking for something with a little bit more substance, you're better off checking out last year's game instead. And the game's multiplayer mode certainly doesn't make up for its shorter length, as it already is suffering from a low player count in a mode that feels a little rough around the edges. Again, there's the workings of a fun online experience here, and it most definitely will be fun to play with a group of friends. But if Capcom wants to keep this experience going, they're going to need to consider making it free to play, and ensure that any premium content is restricted to cosmetics only. But what do you guys think? Are you liking Resident Evil 3 or its online multiplayer component? Let me know in the comments section, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos posted every week.